Good morning. I'm Pastor Stacy Carver at Harvest Time Church International here in Madison, Georgia. I have a guest with me, Apostle and Pastor David Kinney from Christian Growth Cathedral in Conyers, Georgia. We both want to uh, be a blessing to you today. We want to feed the flock. We want to feed you the Word of God today. Uh, Apostle Kenny and myself have traveled together for 16 years over in different nations of the world. Uh, lately, I've been traveling with him to Africa and to Kenya and Uganda. God doing a great work over there. And uh, he's been traveling with me. Uh, we've been co-laboring together over in Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar, and Indonesia. For the last 16 years, we've been together. He's Amen. my partner in faith. He's my covenant partner. Uh, I thank God for him. And today, we have come together to share our experiences and what God has taught us. We want to help you uh, be able to follow Jesus closely. We want you to be so close to Jesus that you see the dust coming up off of his sandals when he's walking. But uh, what a beautiful day it is. And uh, today we, got, we have chosen a topic on the subject of faith. And uh, let us dig right on. Uh, let me just ask Brother Kenny to share uh, something about Christian growth or what you'd like to say about the mission field before we get started, Brother Kenny. Well, at Christian Growth Cathedral, God has put in my spirit that a church is not four walls, but a church is global. And I had been going to the nations of the world for some time, maybe about eight or nine years, when I met Apostle Pastor Apostle Stacy, and we hooked up together, we began to share the gospel throughout the world. <clears throat> and uh, he had the same vision that I have, we believe the same thing, and that is the word of God, that we've seen mighty miracles. We've seen miracles all over the world. Absolutely. And sharing the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. Uh, my greatest anointing upon my life is to win the lost. Um, I have a greater, my, one of my greatest gifts is to be an evangelist. And uh, Apostle Kenny, his gift is to teach and train uh, leaders. So put us both together, I win them, he trains them. <laughs> so uh, that's a good combination and that's how the body of Christ should operate. They should work together, jointly fit together, working together in the unity of the faith. Praise God. And uh, it's been a blessing to travel with Apostle Kenny. I've learned a great deal from this man of God through the years. But right now we're going to dig right on into faith and uh, the scripture I want to uh, uh, lead off with is comes from Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. And it says, When the Son of Man comes again, will he find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man, being Jesus Christ, when he comes again, will he really find faith on the earth? You know, faith is the key ingredient throughout the whole Bible. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation. Uh, Noah, by faith, built an ark. Abraham, by faith, followed the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, followed the Lord, everything God told him to do. Uh, Joshua, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. Uh, David lived by faith, Elijah and Elijah lived by faith. You get on up into the New Testament, even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, walked and lived by faith. Amen. He taught Peter, James, and John, the rest of them, to live by faith. So faith is the key ingredient in the kingdom of God, and to get anything from the kingdom, you got to have faith. Amen. So, Brother, Brother Kenny, how does faith work? Well, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about faith, and God gave me a simple, a simple formula for faith. And that is, I studied the Old Testament and I studied the New Testament, and one thing I found consistent in both the Old and New Testament about faith, and that is, uh, faith is you hear what God says, you hear what He says, you believe what He says, you speak what He says, you act on what He said, and you wait for what He said to be manifested. That's faith. Amen. That's very simple to me. And if you take each one of those uh, individually, uh, 
to check up on your faith and see if you're really in faith, you need to check up on each one of those five things you just mentioned. Amen. Hear the word. If you're going to hear the word. have faith, how do you get faith? Faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word, not by religion, <laughs> not by TV, <laughs> but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the spoken word of God, the rhema of God. Amen. You know, that's what faith comes by. Not by the traditions of men. No way. But by that, the word of God. And that's one thing, Stacey, that we have seen uh, traveling the nation of the world. And being apostles, as me and Stacy do, uh, we are, what we have found when we travel the world, we have found people, they believe Jesus, they love Jesus, but they have a counterfeit faith. You know, they have a counterfeit faith. They don't have uh, the faith that God speaks of in the Word of God. They don't have a now faith. Right. You know, they, they're looking for future faith, right. not a now faith. And we know that faith is now, it's present tense. Amen. It's not future tense. Yes, sir. And, and one thing too, Stace, what, what really got me so set on faith, 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 uh, when I find things consistent, consistent in the Bible, I said, this is what I got to do. You know, and in, in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, it says, just you live by faith. Right. Romans chapter 1, verse 17, it says, just you live by faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, it says, just you live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, the just shall live by faith. Amen. So that, that's a consistent throughout the Bible that we are to live by faith. We Amen. gotta hear what God says, believe what God says, speak what God says, act for what God said, and wait for what God said to come to pass. Hallelujah. You know. Amen. You know. If you're listening to this broadcast today, by the end of it, your faith is gonna be increased. You wanna know how to increase your faith? Increase your time in the word of God. Amen. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. It's not just a one time. You hear and you keep on hearing the word of God. And as you continue to consistently, continually put the word of God in you, faith will begin to grow and faith is what feeds your spirit man. Well, the word of God word feeds of God. your spirit man. This is the bread of life. Amen. And Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. And you know, Stacy, the scripture that you read in Luke chapter 18, verse eight, you said, uh, the Bible where word of God says, when the Lord returned, will he find faith in the earth? When I read that years ago, I said, what do you mean will he find faith in the earth? Right. And now, with what's going on now in the world, with this COVID-19, right, right. you don't hear Christian talking faith. That's right. <laughs> you hear more fear, and we know the word God says, God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. There's so much fear in so Christians. Much fear. You know, and that's because their faith is at a, at a level at a, the lowest can get. Yeah. yeah they operate by fear, and how can you how, how do we know they operate by fear? You look at the shelves at the at, at the grocery store. <laughs> there's no toilet paper, there's no bread, there's no milk, there's no eggs. Amen. They acting like there's a uh, the end of the world is here today. Amen. And uh, you know. They're, they've listened to too much news, worldly news, and it's fed them, but it hasn't fed them faith. And they have uh, listened to the enemy. The same way you get faith, the same way you get fear. Amen. If you listen to God, faith comes. If you listen to the enemy, being Satan, that old serpent of old, if you listen to him talk to you, and he can talk through many voices of the world, he can talk, talk through Hollywood, he can talk through CNN, he can talk through Fox News, he can talk to any of these media networks. And if you listen to it long enough, instead of having faith, you'll have fear, and then you begin to operate and manifest that spirit of fear. Can't you know, sleep at night? Amen. Worry? The Bible says, faith, the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Yeah. And I, I share with my congregation, during this uh, turbulent times that we're going through now, you got to guard your mouth, you guard what you say, watch what come out of your mouth. Uh -huh. you know, because, you know, by, we know uh, life and death in the power of the tongue. Right? Yeah. And, and you can listen to people speak, and you're speaking fear, 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 and not stand on for what God said. Yeah. You know, I went to uh, BJ's yesterday to, uh, to, to pick up some detergent, <laughs> and everybody walked around with masks on. 
He looked at me and said, where's my man? <laughs> I, said, oh, I, I said, no, no, I believe God. There you go. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen to me. I said, but, you know, I take precautions. I, yeah. I, I wash my hands, you know. Yeah. But I just believe Psalm 91. Yeah. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand run in. But it shall not. I own it with my eyes. Am I going to see the reward of the wicked? That's but right. it shall not come nigh me. Yeah. That's the word of God. That's I right. believe what God says. That's right. Amen. We've got the greatest disinfectant in the world working for us. Word of God. It's called <laughs> the word, and we got the blood. Woo! Yes. My goodness. Faith blood. in the blood. Put the blood on the doorpost. And when the death angel comes by, he'll have to pass on by. Thank God for the blood. Yeah. And you got to put faith in the blood. Faith in, in the blood, what, what made us the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. We are the righteousness of God. Yes. And we have inheritance. Yes. <laughs> the righteousness of God. I like, I like that word in, in Isaiah 54, uh, 17. It said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Right? It is inheritance of the righteous. Amen. It's, it's our inheritance. Yes. You know, he can form it, but it ain't going to prosper. Amen. <laughs> he, he can form it, but it ain't going to prosper. Yes. You know, you know so uh, we got to work. We got to speak the word of God, believe the word of God. But it, 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 it is impossible for God to lie. That's right. Impossible. Impossible. Impossible for God to lie. Never going to lie. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's it, faithful. To back up everything that he ever said. I heard someone say, Brother Kenny, one time that really resonated in my spirit. It said, how much faith does it actually take to believe in a God that ain't never lied? Ain't that something? I mean, we know just in our relationship with each other, our confidence is built upon our faithfulness. You know, if I told you this morning to come here and be here at 10 o'clock. You know what? I didn't have to uh, worry about you not coming. You gave me your word. Amen. I had faith and confidence knowing you You are a man that keeps time, that preaches on time, <laughs> understands time. Jesus kept time. He kept time. Woo, we're going to do a sermon on that yeah. one day Jesus. in him. Amen. Jesus My goodness. Time. Amen. we got to give people time. Yeah. 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 But I'll tell you, uh, so faith, again, if you want to have faith, get in God's word. Amen. Get under God's word. Believe God's word. You know, some people hear the word, Brother Kenny, but they don't always believe it. Right, right. The thing in the church today is people pick and choose what they want to believe. Uh, this is a full gospel church. People say, what does a full gospel mean, church, do? I say, well, we believe the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. That's full gospel for me. Amen. I believe if if uh, if they had it, God wants us to have it. So if he gave healing to the children of Israel, he wants us to have it today. Jesus healed in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and throughout the book of Acts, healing was manifested regularly. I believe it's God's will for us to be healed. Sure. God wants us to prosper. I believe that. Some people say, well, that prosperity gospel. I don't know nobody that wants to be voluntarily to be poor. People want to prosper. Amen. But by faith you get it all. But when you hear the word, you have to agree with the word. You have to believe it. Not disagree, but believe. Amen. You don't have you don't need to go along with what the denomination has said. You jump on board with God and you believe the word. Believe the word. Uh the Bible says all things are possible to those who believe. believe. Amen. You not only when you hear the word, you got to believe it. And then the important step, next one is that third step too. Speak. Oh, man. Speak the word. How many times, Brother Kenny, through the years have you heard people come to the altar and they praying and they they say they believing, they in faith, and before they get to the back door, they speak in unbelief. <laughs> Happens all the time. All the time. Happens all the time. All so the time. when it, Jesus is talking about when I return to the earth, would I find faith? Well, see, if you're in faith, you ain't speaking two or three different things. Absolutely. You ain't believing one hour, and the next hour, you're in unbelief and speaking, oh, I'm dying. <laughs> oh, I got a terrible headache. Oh, I'm so poor I can't pay attention. It's just that mouth that cancels your prayer. Oh, you know, in Proverbs, Proverbs uh, 
6, 2. It says, we are sneered by the words of our mouth. We are sneered by the word. That word sneer in the Hebrew means we are trapped, like, like you trap animals. Right. So it, what Satan does, he puts something in our heart. So we speak negative things. We speak his word, not God's word. That's, that, right. that's how we have problems. Right. That's how we have problems. <clears throat> that's it. You know, people say, uh, uh, Pastor, are you going to take get a flu shot? I said, I don't get the flu. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> I don't get the flu. And, and I ain't never took a flu shot. It never will. Or how about they come out with a, with a, with a vaccine for the for the virus, for a coronavirus? I said, I'm not taking no vaccine either. You know, because God said, yeah. you know, God said that no plague should come nigh my dwelling, and I believe that. That's right. I believe that. Here's a big thing I've learned through the years, Brother Kenny, is going back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. When God created man, the Bible said he created us in the image and the likeness of God. We're so much like him, oh. built like him. We are, God is spirit, and man is a spirit, soul, and a body, Amen. three parts. Amen. Here's the thing, when God created everything that we look at, the trees, the birds, the sea, the ocean, the universe, how did he create it? Speaking. Speaking. He spoke everything Speaking. into existence. I would say without the word, there was nothing made that was made. Amen. God spoke it. He said, let there be light. So when you're in faith and have the faith of God, you're going to learn to use your mouth because there's power of life and death in the tongue. And speak what God said. Speak it. Speak what God said. Only what he said. You know, let me share this, share this, uh, share this with, with you uh, while we are talking to the body of Christ. And that's uh, John 12, 49, you know. And Jesus said, before, before we get to this, he said, as my father sent me, even so I send you. He said that the day he, uh, when he was raised from the dead. Yeah. But look what he said in, in uh, John chapter 12, verse 49. He said, uh, he said, for I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. He told me what I should say yeah. and what I should speak. Jesus only spoke what the Father said, and we should only speak what Jesus said. Amen. Amen. As my Father sent me, he said, I'm sending you, speaking the word of God. He was in perfect agreement Amen. with his Father. And, you know, and, uh, what a lot of people don't realize too, Stacy, is Psalm 24, verse 1 said, the earth is the Lord's. <laughs> Jesus is still in control. Yes. He's still in control. Yeah. He, he never lost control of the world. Right. Man did, but he yeah. had. But there he had. you go. Amen. Man, you know, so, and that's why he said he's upholding all things. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 3. He's upholding all things by the power of his word. word. Amen. By the power of his word. And that word is rhema, the spoken word. When we speak, things happen. Yeah. Things happen. Things happen. We, we got so much power in our mouth, you know, when we speak. And the enemy, he, he comes and he steals. He takes control of our heart and our mouth. Yeah. So we speak negative instead of speaking what God says. So if a, if a person's out there listening to us today and they say, you know, I need to be healed. I need to be delivered. I need to be set free. I need to learn how to prosper. They need to begin to watch what they're saying. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then they need to find the scriptures that pertain to their situation and be I call it a rhema word. God speaks about a rhema word, which is an on time word, which is a word that God can put inside your Holy Spirit, inside your spirit, man, for a particular situation and time. And when you release that rhema word out of your mouth, it goes into the atmosphere and begins to produce a miracle for you. But you got to start it. The operation of faith is by speaking it. Amen. Amen. And when you speak, not all of that, but, Stacey, but you put the angels to work. Amen. You put the angels to work. Yeah. The angels are created beings to, to minister to us right. who, are, who are here in the salvation. And we have to speak the word of God. And when we speak the word of God, the angels move. Yeah. I think it's Psalms 103, verse, verse 20. 20. Verse 20, yeah. Says that the angels hearken unto the voice of the word of God. Which means that God's word has to be, have to have a, a sound. Yeah. <laughs> it has to have a sound. You got to speak it. You can't just have it in your heart. So if you want the angels to get on board with you and help you out, which if they are the ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation, 
If they on board with you, you got to be speaking the word. Amen. If you want to tie their hands up to where they can't work, speak negative. Just <laughs> speak contrary yeah. and negative. Right. All the time. And I tell you, I, I've met a few people that are quite negative. They don't have an ounce of faith, but they go to church every Sunday. Every Sunday. And and don't never watch what they say. Never. Never put a lid on it. Guard your heart. You gotta guard your heart. Because when the buzz of the heart, the mouth is gonna speak. Yeah. If you don't open up your heart to all kind of nonsense, that's what's gonna come out. So, in your opinion, would it make a huge difference if you watch the news 12 hours a day or if you took 12 hours and spent it in the word strengthening and building your faith would it make a huge difference in how much faith you have absolutely 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 the more you stay in the word the, the stronger your work the stronger your faith is going to come yeah the more you stay in the words the more you not just read it but study it the word. Just study the word of God. Study the word of God. Study the word of God. It's going to change your life. It's alive. Yes. It's powerful. Powerful. Alive. Ain't never lost its power. Never. Never. Word of God that today is just as strong everybody out there as it was when God spoke it out of his mouth. It's still alive and active. Uh, so, you know, as me and you travel, Brother Kenny, we, we, we train in leaders overseas and so forth and when we get there, we have a question and answer session at the end of our conferences. And we find out that a lot of people are very confused in the body of Christ. Uh, there's so many people that come and they have different doctrines than what, they kind of mix some of, they mix the word with their doctrines or with their traditions. Uh, and what happens is there's a lot of people overseas and in, even in America that are confused about what to believe. Uh, what is faith? And I believe the Bible is so clear about how to live and to operate by faith. And those five things that you gave, the formula of faith, to me is a way for a man or woman in Christ to examine whether they are really in faith or they're not. And if we will examine ourselves and go through the checklist, we'll find out, you know what? I'm actually not in faith here because after I stop and think for a moment, everything I've been saying ain't lining up with what God's saying. Amen. Amen. Uh, and what happens is it begins to tie the kingdom of God and the angels. It ties them up and they're not able to produce that miracle like we would like. You, you have so many so-called men of God that never have the signs and wonders following. You know, and that's because they're confused. Yeah. You know, the enemy, you know, what a lot of people don't understand that in the world, Satan, Satan has a system. And it's the Babylonian system. And and when I read that in the book of Revelation, where it says, talk about the Babel, Babylon, and I said, Babylon, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. I said, what do you mean Babylon is fallen? I said, Babylon fell over 500 years ago. So I began to study about Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. So I went to the book of, I went to the Old Testament and looking up Babylon. And it's, it's, you know, it said, come from the, another Hebrew word, Babel, which means confusion. I yeah. Said, oh, so he runs his system, the world, through confusion. Yeah. You know, and we see so many different uh, denominations, they're confused. Yeah. And man, are they confused yeah. <laughs> in America. That's right. I mean, when you see all the homosexuals, <laughs> somebody's confused. Right. You're a man going with a man. You're confused. Right. You know, That's right. and women going with women. That's right. You know, they're confused. Confused. You know, you know, thinking somebody else or just confusion. You see, see it all over, just confused. Easy. That's why they don't speak the word of God. They're, they're confused. Right. You know, oh, I go to this church. Right. I go, you know, you know what, what really Stacy, one thing that that, that, that I get or I look for when I'm talking to somebody, what comes out of your mouth? Yeah. Do God come out of your mouth or do Jesus come out of your mouth? That's right. <laughs> is it God or is it Jesus? That's right. You know, you know, God, 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 God. Well, what God are you talking about? That's right. That's a good point. <laughs> what God are you talking about? Good point. You know, God, 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 God. God, God, God. No, 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 no. Jesus. Yeah, there you go. Jesus. 
Jesus. That's yeah. what I want to hear. That's right. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear about nothing by God. That's right. All I want to hear about is Jesus. Yeah. You follow me? So these people, when they talk, they never say Jesus. Yeah. That's the, my, a red flag. Yeah. Me. Red flag. You know, Jesus. That's the one name that's above every, every name. Every, amen. That's why we see so many miracles. And, and that's, that's the one that the devil don't want you to mention. Absolutely. That's the one he got to bend and bow to. Jesus Amen. is Amen. Lord. Amen. Yeah, I'm like you. When a person's praying, they need to be praying. And whenever they're preaching, whenever they sing, singing, whatever they're doing for the glory of God, they need to be shouting from the rooftop, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can't say it enough. <clears throat> Absolutely. That name, another thing that gets me about it when people, oh, Jesus. No, 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 don't be just throwing that name around. Yeah. There's so much power in that yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, it's power in that name. An you honor. Know, you know, you can, one time we, we were over in Thailand and we would have a, a crusade and it started getting rain, we get ready to rain and the wind started blowing. And I spoke, I said, I spoke to, 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 to the wind and the rain and it stopped. Hallelujah. Duke, Duke, Duke said, whoa. <laughs> you know, I said, well, Jesus can speak to, you know. That's Lord, right. Don't get away. That's faith. Yeah, that's faith. Operating by faith. You know, Satan was trying to come and end that crusade. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, no, no, you got to speak. You got to speak. You know, when we don't use our authority and use our faith, uh, the circumstances are going to continue that are coming. Amen. But by faith, you can change facts. Doctor can give you a fact, something wrong with you. He can show it to you on x-rays. He can show it to you on paper, whatever. Give you a diagnosis. This is what you got. It may be a fact. But faith and God's word can change the facts that we get down here on this planet. What the Bible says, no weapon formed against you. So probably he'll form it. <laughs> yeah. He'll form it against you. Right. But are you going to receive it? Yeah, that's like right. Like you said, uh, I would never forget. I got sick, uh, sick uh, about four years ago. Me and you were supposed to be going to Thailand. Yeah. Right? And I went on a uh, three week fast, 20 day fast. I came off the fast and I wanted to go to the bathroom. I couldn't go to the bathroom. Right? And I said, man, but my stomach was hurting. You know, and I was eating, you know, and my stomach was getting bigger and bigger. And I got pain. I went to about three, four doctors and nothing happened. So I said, I better go to the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room, and then they gave me x-rays. They came back and said, so Mr. Kennedy, you got a blockage, blockage in your intestines. I said, oh, yeah? I said, wait, well, give me some medicine. He said, no, 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 you may have to have surgery. We're going to see, we're going to go see a surgeon. So I go to the doctor. I, they, they, they admit me to the hospital. Then they took x-rays, right, and they came, and put me to sleep and gave me a colonoscopy. That's what it was. And I woke up. The doctor stood up over me. He said, Mr. Kenny, you see right here, this is, you have cancer. Now, I looked up, I said, well, do what you gotta do, and I'll do what I gotta do. It never came out of my mouth. And what I didn't know, he had already told my wife. He went to my wife and told my wife, said, he said, uh, your husband had cancer. My wife looked at my son standing there, my wife said, don't repeat that. Don't say that, don't repeat it. And, right. we, and we never repeated, and they did what they had to do, and they took, came to me about three days later and told me, said, Mr. Kenny, we sent everything to the, to the pathologist, and, and the oncologist was there in there too. He, the guy who did chemotherapy. And they said, we can't find any cancer nowhere in your lymph nodes or nowhere. So you're good to go. And the oncologist said, well, you don't need no chemotherapy. Here's my, my car. If you need me, give me a call. They left, took the car, tore it up, and I've been clean. You know, I go, I go get checkups, and you can't find nothing. It uh -huh. never came out of my mouth that uh -huh. I had cancer. Amen. Never came out of my mouth. He would, see, he would try to form something. He was, right. he was forming it. Yeah. You know, he was forming it. Yeah. And, uh, he tried to get you to agree with it. <laughs> right. And you said, ah. Uh-uh. No, no. I don't care how he looked. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's right. You know, and I don't care what they say. You say what God said. That's right. Say what God said. Like with coronavirus, everybody wearing masks. I was, when I pulled up today, you came out, what did you do? We hugged each other. <laughs> What do we do? We hug each other. Amen. He said, oh, these, these guys are crazy. That's you right. know, I, I, I went to buy my wife a bicycle. She wanted to ride a bike. And my wife had on a mask in Kroger, I mean, in Walmart. And a lady came up, and we were talking, all three was talking. And me and the lady started laughing. And I gave a little high five. My wife said, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> she said, 
I got a mask on. You give somebody a high five, that ain't nothing gonna happen to me. Yeah, that's right. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me. You know, God, God, God can't lie. That's right. He's a holy God. He that's can't right. lie. That's right. And He says, "No weapon is formed against you prosper." He said, "Only with my eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked." Absolutely. You know, no clay coming there. Not my door. Not even my kids. You know. You know. See, that, that, what I'm seeing and hearing is, uh, you operate and living by faith. Just like the word says. Amen. And fear and faith can't coexist in the same place. No way. No way. So we, when you're in faith, you can sell, tell it by the manifestations and how we act. Yeah. I mean, hey, I ain't scared to high five you <laughs> because I'm in faith. I'm in faith. I know there's power in the blood. I know there's power in God's word. I know God's faithful to look over his word to perform it. What's there to fear when you got God on your side? You know, I don't know if he was a Christian or not, but you remember Roosevelt in 1930, I think it was 31, when he, his inaugural speech, he said, we have nothing to fear, but what? Fear himself. Yeah. He made that, he made that in his inaugural address. And that, and that he made that during the depression. Yeah. He said, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. So what he was saying, I'm not going to fear, and America's not going to fear. So what we're saying today, with this coronavirus, there's nothing to fear, but fear itself. Fear is, fear is torment. Fear is a spirit. Yeah. It's, it's torment. It'll, it'll torment you. It sure will. But you know, some two things that we yeah. were talking before, we're talking about faith, right? Yeah. And faith operates by love. Work is by love. Yeah. Right? And, and, and perfect love do what? Cast it out fear. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, if your faith, you said it earlier, if your faith is lonely, you better check your love. Yeah. Yeah, if your faith ain't working. Check your love. Check your love, Walt. Check your love, Walt. Absolutely. Are you in love? Are you love? Galatians 5, 6. Faith worketh by love. So unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, all those things will bind your hinder faith. your faith. Your faith. Amen. It's good to have a clean heart before God. I'm telling clean you. hands and a clean heart. <laughs> good to have it. Amen. You know, I... I I taught on that before Galatians 5, 6, that faith worketh by love. One reason that Jesus never had an unanswered prayer and nothing ever hindered his faith because he was always walking in agape love. He is the God of love. Jesus is God expression of love, walking on the earth. He loved humanity. And whenever he prayed for no matter what the situation may be, the blind, the lame, the dead, uh, whatever it may be, through his agape love, his faith always operated at a hundred percent. Never was his faith hindered because his love was perfect. You know, as we travel the world and you see people that they, they love Jesus, they love the Lord, but something is wrong. You know, and, and it brings you back to what Paul said to the church in Rome, in Rome, he, when he wrote the book of Romans, you know, at the end of his third missionary journey, he was at the Corinth and he wrote the book of Romans because Aquila and Priscilla had been working with him for about three years. And they were telling him how he, people in Rome, they, they need your help. Right. So Paul, he, he got a strong desire to go to Rome. Yeah. Right? So he writes, he writes the book of Romans, you know, and he sends with Phoebe to, to Rome. And he says something that's so prevalent today in Romans chapter 10, verse 2. He says, and I'll read it in Romans chapter 10, verse, verse number 2, right? He says, uh, For I, I bear them record, talking about the Jews in Rome. He says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They got a zeal for God, yeah, yeah. but not according to knowledge. Right. People have a zeal for God, but, yeah. but, but they don't have a knowledge about faith. That's right. They don't have a knowledge about faith. That's right. They think you just, oh, they're believing. Yeah. Faith is not believing. Believe. Faith is now. Yeah. You know. Here's a good question I like to ask people. They say, hey, I'm, I'm believing God for this. Oh, no. <laughs> and the next question is, what word are you standing on? <laughs> what scripture are you yeah. standing on? Where did God say you could have that? Is it God's will for you to have that? Is it? Did he say it? And they like, uh, they look with that blank stare in their eye like, well, what are you talking about? I'm just believing God. I'm like, well, no, you ain't believing God. If you ain't got his word, see, God's only responsible 
his will to fulfill his will, and his will is his word. His will is his word. Absolutely. That's his covenant to us. Absolutely. If you can find it, he'll and stand on it. God's faithful to perform it, but uh, you got to have some word. That's why he said he's upholding everything by what the power uh, of his word. Amen. And, and, and when we and when we pray and speak, we have to do it with confidence. Yeah. You know. You know. We were over over in uh in uh, Phnom Penh. Remember the first time we went over in Cambodia, and one thing really hit me was uh, uh, these guys, these two pastors came down from near, up out of the Vietnam border. And he asked me the question. He asked me, yeah. what, he asked me, he said, uh, Apostle Kenny, how can I be more righteous? And when he said that, I said, boom! How can you be more righteous? Your spirit can't get no more righteous than the thing you got saved. Right? right? But see, what has happened, people don't have the consciousness of righteousness. That's right. You know, they don't have, they think self condemnation that's what they have. And that's what hinders their faith. Because yeah. if you if you say know you're righteous, the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 28 verse 1, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. <laughs> you're, you're bold. Once yeah. you know how righteous you are when Jesus came, yeah. you'll speak bold. Confident builds. Oh, it builds up. I mean, so I have the righteousness of yeah. God. I have the righteousness of God, you know. And even when you pray. Strengthen your prayer life. It will. Look what you said something about, about the God's word is his will. And I'm thinking about here in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. He says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And watch this. He said, And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Our faith. That's the victory right there. So I mean, Woo! <laughs> the, this is the victory that, <laughs> that overcomes the world, even our faith. Yes. You know? and, uh, and another thing he says here is, uh, in verse 14, 5, he said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yeah. And we know if he hears us, we have the petition that we desire of him. Absolutely. This is the confidence we have. Yeah. We ask anything according to his will, his word. So everything that Jesus said we can have in the word, it's available to us. But we got to have faith to get it from heaven to earth. Amen. Right? Faith is the currency. Faith is the currency. In the kingdom. kingdom. Amen. Talk to me a little bit about faith being the currency. <laughs> you know, uh, as we travel and we train the uh, body of Christ all over the world, and I share with them that every kingdom has certain things in common. You know, every kingdom has an army, so the kingdom of God. Right? right. We have angels. Every kingdom has a, 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 a language. So does the body of Christ. He the most son We speak in tongues. Yeah. Every kingdom, every kingdom has has a king. Yeah. And so do we. Amen. Right. And, and every kingdom has a currency. And so yeah. do we. Yeah. Right. But here's the thing: every kingdom has a currency, but in every kingdom there is counterfeit currency. And in the body of Christ, there is counterfeit faith. That's right. That's what you said. When you start saying, oh, I, I hope so, mm -hmm. I'm believing God, that's mm -hmm. counterfeit faith. Mm -hmm. That's that's counterfeit faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I pray, you know, I'm believing God. Faith is now. When you start believing and believing and believing and not don't believe, you know, you don't have faith. When you, when you speak in negative, you don't have faith. Right. And, and these people have counterfeit faith. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Absolutely. They have a zeal for God, but not a quote. They don't know the power of their word. The power yeah. of the spoken word of God. Yeah. My word shall not return void. Amen. But it will accomplish where every now and then. Who's going to send that word? You and me. We, we're going to send that word. Amen. We're going to send the word. You know, if you if you don't have faith, you have you may have a counterfeit faith. Right. And there's something about counterfeit. I can give you a counterfeit ten dollar bill. You'll take it. You, you give us a bet. Yeah. We, we'll pass it around. Yeah. You know, and we don't know it's counterfeit. That's right. We didn't look at it very close. You know, and, but, but you take it to the bank. Yeah. And as soon as you hand it to the bank, they don't even have to, have to look up and scratch it up. As soon as they get in the hand, this is counterfeit. Yeah. You try to take counterfeit faith to, to, to Jesus. Yeah. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. You know, that here on this, in, where we live and operate this worldly system, to make a transaction, to go to Walmart or go to the grocery store, you buy your goods, you get your shirt, you get your groceries, whatever. When you get them to the counter, you got to make a transaction. You get the goods, but you've got to give them some currency. 
that's called a transaction. Absolutely. You give them the, tra the, the, the currency, they give you the goods. You've made, a, you've made a transaction. So to put this spiritually, whenever heaven is full of miracles, they're laid up for us up there. We, Jesus already paid the price for healing, Amen. Amen. deliverance, miracle signs and wonders. It's all still available. We just got to be able to get it by faith. So if you want to get a healing from heaven to earth or deliverance or prosperity, whatever blessing you need is going to come from above. All, uh, God is good. All the blessings that come down from God are good. But if you want it to get it from heaven to earth, you can't buy it from Jesus. You can't use a $20 bill or a $100 bill. You've got to have faith. That's the only thing that's going to get it from heaven to earth is faith. Got to have faith. Have, you know, in Colossians chapter, chapter 2, verse 6, it says, As you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. He said, however you receive Christ, that's how you live. And how do we receive Christ? By faith. By faith. By faith. We get saved by faith. But through grace, by faith. faith. Right. That's how we got by saved. By faith. You know, faith is the door. Faith is the door to your salvation. Faith is the door to your prosperity. Faith is the door to healing. Faith is the door to miracles. Everything operates by faith. Yeah. Everything you're going to get going to come by hear, faith. Hear what God says. Believe what God says. Speak what God says. Act upon what God says. And just wait for God's word to manifest. It's the expectation. Expectation. Walking in expectation. My goodness. You know, I believe God. Yeah. I believe. I'm not believing. Yeah. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. And if I'm believing, I'm speaking. Yeah. Amen. What God says. God don't lie. Not what God is saying. Amen. Amen. Walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by sight. You, you know, you hear people say, well, God said it, I believe, and that's settled it. No, my brother. No. God said it, I believe, and I said, no. God said it, that settles it. Yeah. Whether you believe, whether you believe or not. Yeah. You know, because you know, yeah. God's word is forever settled in heaven. Yeah. You know, you know, you can believe you want to, or you don't have to believe, it ain't gonna change God. That's right. Well, we gotta we gotta get in line with God. We gotta get in position. We gotta get in position. And, and the only way to stay in position is how what we believe, what we say, and how we act. Yeah. Here's a big one. Is faith requires an act. Many, over and over and over, look at Jesus. Amen. He's our perfect example. You, if you want to know the will of God, here's a, here's a good way to know it. So many people wonder, what is God's will? I'm not sure it's his will to heal me. I'm not sure if it's his will to do this. Look at Jesus. He is the express image of the Father. He never did anything outside of God's will. If you see Jesus doing it, it was the will of the Father. He said, I didn't come to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. And then he said, Jesus said, uh, the same one that sent me, I send you. So faith requires an act. When Jesus seen a lame man laying on, on, a, on the, the cot, the bed, he'd say, take up your bed and walk. It required an act. Amen. Now, Jesus released the word the word was spoken. The lame man has to believe it. And then he has to act on what was said. Same way our faith works. God has spoken. It requires an act now. I got to start acting like it's mine. I got to start acting. Uh, if I believe I'm healed, I need to act like I'm healed. I need to get up off the bed. I, Kenneth Hagin was, was lame, paralyzed from his waist down. He began to use uh, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He, he took his own hand and just throwed his legs over the bed and tried to walk. That's an act of faith. First time it didn't work. Second time it didn't work. But he kept believing. And he kept, and eventually the power of God came upon him and he began to walk. Uh, when the, the man was in the synagogue, he had a withered hand. Jesus looked at him and said, stretch out your hand. It requires an act now from that man that's got the withered hand. Here's the, the fault, Brother Kenny, with people in church. You speak the word, and that man could have looked at Jesus and said, humanistically thinking, uh, I know you're the Messiah. 
I know you're the anointed one, but I was born this way. Mm -hmm. The doctor said I'd always be this way. And now you telling me to stretch forth my hand, which they said I'd never be able to use and never been able to use. He, logically, he could have said, this don't make no sense. But what he had to do was agree with Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, stretch forth thy hand. And with no excuses, the man, all he had to do was try. All he had to do was release some faith by trying. And the minute that man looked at his hand and tried to open it, the power of God hit it. Amen. And that thing flew open and it was completely healed. Just like that witch doctor over in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, he came to our, right. at the healing, uh, at the evangelistic night crusade. He didn't come for salvation when we called for the lost to come. But the second invitation, we said, if you're sick here, Jesus Christ is alive. He's here. He's the great physician. And if you put your faith in him, he can heal you. The witch doctor uh, came forward. Not to receive Jesus, but he wanted to know, was Jesus really Lord? And could he heal him? <laughs> and he said in his heart, if this Jesus whom you preach, if he is Lord, and if he heals my hand, I'm believing in him. Amen. You know, Jesus seen his faith then. He heard the inner thoughts of his heart. And when he came up and he placed those hands before us, Brother Kenny, they were all withered up. I'll never get that. <laughs> and we laid our hands on him, spoke yeah. the word of God, the word of God. believed God's word, and he acted. Yeah. The power of God opened his hands up, and he just kept flipping them like pancakes over and over and over, amazed. Amen. The pain was gone. Hands were healed. And man, he got up on the stage and told everybody, Jesus is Lord. Amen. So he had been a witch doctor for well, how, how many 50 years? years? 50 years. 50 years of witch doctor. He's 70 years old now. And went back to his village and do what? Stop preaching Jesus. Yeah. yeah. To my knowledge, this man still attending church faithfully in Thailand because of the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit come upon him. And it all came through faith. And you, like, you said, Paul State says something real good. You must act in faith. And as you were talking about, talking, I was thinking about the witch, not the uh, witch doctor, but I was thinking about the ten lepers who came to Jesus to be healed. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. Yeah. They turned around and started walking. The Bible says, as they went, yeah. they were healed. Yeah. So they acted upon and that. what Jesus said, and they were healed. And that. You know, like Peter came, to the gate beautiful, right? He didn't pray for the guy. He acted on what Jesus right. did, and the, the guy got healed. Here's a, uh, one of the problems I see, Brother Kenny, through the years is people, they don't fail in praying. You know, the Africans can pray. Woo. Man, they can pray. They'll pray all night. They'll pray the whole they have church all night. <laughs> I tell them, I can pray the whole of a Billy Goat. Yeah. <laughs> but they, prayer, I, Brother Ron Hard Bunky said this, a great man of God. He said, prayer alone is like walking on one leg. He said, you got to put the other leg down, and that's the act of faith. Amen. You, whenever you pray, then you got to act. And whenever you pray and act, God has something to work with. Amen. Amen. You got to give God something to work with, I always say. They, people always say, I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God. I'm like, hey, that's, that's great. You're trusting God. But still, you got to give God something to work with. You got you to step out on his word. If he tells you to, to, to do something requires an act, if you fail to do it, you're probably not going to get your miracle. Just do what Jesus said. If he spoke it, act. That's what Peter did. Jesus, Jesus was walking, walking the water. And Peter said, Lord, if it bid you, if, if it's you, bid me to come. There you Jesus go. said, come. Peter could step out of the boat. Why? Yeah. Because of what Jesus said. Amen. He said, come, I'm coming. He I'm came. Coming. I'm coming. Act. He acted upon what Jesus said. And so, we, we got to act upon what God said. And the rest of them didn't act. They didn't act. Stay what they boat. get? They stayed in the boat. Was it was it Jesus' fault <laughs> that they didn't get walk on water? You know what gets me too. <laughs> you know they talk about big mouth Peter, but I like Peter. Yeah, you know Peter had he, he, he stepped out of what God said. Yeah. You, know, you know, even though he denied him, but he still stepped out yeah. of what he said. You know, and uh, John, who wrote the Gospel of John, you know when he writes the Gospel of John, 
everybody said about how Peter got out of the boat, but John didn't say anything about Peter getting out of the boat. <laughs> he did. He don't. He don't say anything about Peter getting out of the boat. Yeah. You know, and that's where some Christians are. They, they look at your faith and they they, they want to knock your faith. That's right. They want to knock your faith because they're not stepping out of faith. Yeah. You know? that's like right. like going to the missionary field. A lot of people don't go because they're scared. They're afraid. Yeah. yeah. They think something's gonna happen. Yeah. You know? and, uh, and that's the biggest lesson you can have, Stacey, yeah. as you know, going to, going to a different nation of the world and and, uh, and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, getting people in line with what God says. Get them in line with Jesus. You know, people say, well, who is Jesus? Oh, he came. He came to the Savior of my sins. I said, yeah, he, that's one thing he did. But Jesus came to restore sonship. Yeah. Amen. That's why he came. He came to restore sonship and righteousness and sons of God. Yes. That's who we are. You know, we, we are sons of God. We are the righteousness of God. And we walk in the power of God. That's who we are. We're not Baptists. We're not Methodists. We're not Presbyterian. We're not Pentecostal. We are sons of God. That's right. We are the righteousness of God by the blood of Jesus yes. and faith in that blood. You know, and it's a disgrace that we don't walk. He died on the cross. He died yes. and rose again yes. for, our, for our righteousness, for our justification. Yes. You know, he's sealed. The resurrection is sealed. Amen. The resurrection sealed our righteousness. That's right. He was wounded for our transgression, but he was raised again for our justification. Legally, now we're sons of God. We're the righteousness of God. We got to step out on that. And Jesus, when he left, he didn't leave us a dead, broke, powerless church. He left us power. And that power comes through the Holy Spirit of the living God. And it's available to me, you, and the world today. And God wants us in Christ to operate as Christ in this earth today. We are the sons of God. Not the son, but the sons, the sons of God. The sons of God. And I tell you what, the earth is waiting and groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the Son of God, sons of God today, to just begin to walk and to act in faith like Christ did. Amen. Now I say faith this, is important. And I say this, if you want to know who you are, but how you should be acting today. And if you're in the right church, read the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the church that was started. And if your church is not lined up with the book of Acts, you better find your church that lined up with the book of Acts. Because Amen. walking by faith and the miracle of God, the manifest in Jesus Christ is being glorified. Yes. Amen. And the book of Acts, in case you didn't know then, it's the only book Amen. <laughs> in the Word of God. It doesn't end with an amen. amen. It's the only one. You can go through the New Testament and flip, flip, flip. Every one ends with an amen except one book, and that's the book of Acts. That means the church is still going. Still going. Amen. Still acting. Still acting. Still being written. Amen. Amen. You're going to have a chapter in the book <laughs> when we get to heaven. Amen. I believe we may have a, 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 a small piece in it, I hope, uh, because I want to give the angels of God something to write about in heaven. And if we step out of the boat and step out of the water, I tell you, it, it, it pleases Jesus Christ for us to get into that realm of faith Amen. where the impossible is only possible through him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When we in him, and he's in us, and we're standing on the word, man, it's an atmosphere full of signs, wonders, and miracles beginning to break out. Absolutely. That's what the world, I believe, is hungry for. I believe we're on the edge of, a, of some type of new adventure with Jesus, a revival that's coming that America needs and the world needs. And I believe it's going to be a great awakening Amen. and revival before the second return of Jesus. I believe so. I believe, I believe this is a tool that God's using for the great revival that's coming. Wake up call. Let's wake up call. Yes. Well, Brother Kenny, this session has been explosive, it's been fun, it's been powerful, and I just pray that a lot of the sheep have been fed the Word of God today, and I hope that they'll listen and agree and begin to uh, it'll just empower them to be a greater Christian than they've ever been before. Uh, I'd like for uh, to invite everybody to tune in or on their computer, go to the internet and uh, view our webpage. You can get that by going to www.theharvestchurchonline.com. 
www.thepeopleshop.com and you can go to the links on that webpage and you can go to YouTube, Facebook, and SoundCloud and you can view these, uh, these sermons that we're giving you. Me and Apostle Kenny are going to begin, continue to do these type of uh, get-togethers and uh, hopefully uh, do them weekly and be a blessing to you. Brother Kenny? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say this before we leave, yeah. before we close out. I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you, the backslider. I want to speak to you who never received Christ. I want to speak to you and give you an opportunity right now to come, into, come to Jesus. All you got to do, say, I heard the word of God. Yeah. I believe the word of God. Now I'm going to speak and act on it and you can be saved. You can be in your living room. You can be in your bedroom. You can be driving your car. You can be wherever you're at. You can be born again today. Today. I never forget 40 years ago when I said the same prayer in my bedroom and I got saved. I've been saved for 40 years. If you want to receive Christ, say this prayer after me. Me and Stacey are going to pray now. Yeah. And we're going to lead you to Jesus. Just say this. So, Lord Jesus, I heard your word. Now, Lord, I'm inviting you into my heart. For I believe in my heart that you died for me. I believe you rose again for my righteousness. Lord, today, today, I bring heaven and earth to notice. Take notice that I made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. Lord, I thank you. For I believe you are Lord. And Lord, I believe you rose again. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, my brother, you are my brother, and you're in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Yes. I'd also like to, those that you are looking today, and you're on a sick bed, I want you to know Jesus Christ took the stripes on his back for you to be healed. Amen. Get in God's word. Build your faith. And let the Holy Spirit minister to you. But I want you to know you can come off that sick bed. You can walk again. You can see again. You can hear again. You can live a long life because that's God's will for you. Believe it. Trust God. Believe the word and act on it and begin to see a manifestation from heaven. You're going to be made whole. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. We love you. We'll be back. We hope that you'll join in and be with us again. God bless you. Jesus is the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Amen.